Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. Marshall. What if each one of us were absolutely isolated from everyone else, doomed to travel the earth alone from birth to death, destined never to see another face, touch another hand, hear another voice, denied the least contact with another of our own kind? Unthinkable, isn't it? For each one of us, there has to be a meeting in some place at some time. Else we should all go mad. Strange, isn't it? The two of us showing up here? Both at the same time? In this weird place? How do you figure it happened? Well, it was the storm, of course. It was getting so bad, really so terrible. Actually, frightening. Impossible to go on any further. Absolutely. By the way, do you know where we are? I know. Don't you? I haven't the least idea. Our mystery drama, Meeting by Chance, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Mandel Kramer and Marion Seldes. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Some meetings are casual. Some meetings are unavoidable. Some are planned, and others are artfully contrived. Some occur in the natural course of ordinary living, and others come about purely and simply by accident. It is one of these incidental meetings that concerns us here. But I can't see a thing. Wow. That sounded close. Dump windshield wipers are worse than nothing. Just slosh the rain from one side to the other. I bet she forgot to get new blades. Simple thing like that, and she forgets. I told her a dozen times, get new blades. Where am I, anyway? the road somewhere that fork a ways back i take the left one instead of the right i swear i don't know i can't see a thing why that was even closer wouldn't it be swell to get hit by lightning out here in the middle of nowhere come on i can't be nowhere i must be somewhere somewhere near home only i can't see damn rain makes it impossible to see Maybe I should get out and take a look around. Yeah. Oh, cow. What a soaker. Cow. Too close. Too close for comfort like they say. Is this a driveway? Looks like a driveway, sort of, under all this water. A mailbox? Yeah. No name, though name that I can make out anyway. Driveway and a mailbox adds up to a house. That figures at the other end of the driveway there must be a house. People. Gotta get a roof over my head till this downpour stops. Dangerous out here. Heck of a driveway. Nobody's used it much way the trees hang over it. Stands to reason, though, there's a house at the other end. Some kind of a house, any kind of a... Wow. Sure, there it is, sure. I knew there'd be a house. There had to be. Right in the nick of time. Now, 
his doorbell. No doorbell? Hey, in there, do you mind? Please? Somebody, somebody mind opening the door? It's wet out here in case anybody cares. Come on, come on, come on. It could be anybody. But it's certainly not the owner. The owner would have a key. It could be a tramp of some kind. You can't be too careful these days. It... Thank goodness I locked that door. There's no way anybody could get in. All the windows are locked, and the back door, too. I don't care who it is. He's not going to get in. It must be a man, because of the way he pounds on the door. It could be a thief, or a lunatic, or a, or a rapist. There's plenty of those around. I think he's gone away. Gave up finally. Went away. Well, that's something. Ah, oh, the Stay out of here, you. Don't you get... Don't you... You just stay Take out of here. Just, just take Don't it. you come in here. What's the matter with you? What do you mean breaking in like this? I'll call the police. Did you hear me knock on the door? I heard you. Why don't you open it? Why should I? Don't you ever open the door? No, not just to anybody. Well, look, I, I'm sorry I broke your window. It's not my window. It's, this, this isn't my house. Well, how'd you get in here, then? Somebody let you in? The front door was open. Oh? And then you locked it? Well, I was afraid not to. Look, I'll pay for the window. I can leave some money. Yeah, yeah, five ought to cover it. Uh, my car stopped all of a sudden. and uh, uh, See, I went through a big puddle, and it just stopped. Well, the timer got wet. Oh, well, I don't know anything about automobiles. What was that? What was what? I heard something. I, I didn't hear anything. Shh. It sounded like a cat. Probably a cat in the house. Well, I guess there must be. What am I supposed to do? Stuck here with this stranger. I hope he doesn't get any funny ideas. He looks all right, but you can't go by appearances. You read about a murderer or a rapist in the newspaper, and then they show you a picture of him, and he looks just like anybody else. I don't care much for cats myself. They're very decorative, people say. I like dogs, all right. Dogs are okay. Yes. Dogs are nice. Not a bad-looking dame. Not what you'd call good-looking, either. Not my type at all. Dull. Miss Dull in person. Dull from Dullsville. Dress dull, too. I bet you made that little number herself. Loving hands at home. I wonder who lives here. No idea. Whoever it is isn't very tidy. Yeah, it is kind of messy. I hate a messy place. Yeah. Do you live near here? South Glendale. That's so. I live in Glendale Heights. Do you really? Yeah, uh, new development. Is it nice? It's all right. I don't think he's going to try anything funny. I think he's safe. But I hope the storm lets up soon. I mean, I'm running out of things to talk about. I don't know anybody in Glendale Heights. And I think new development is horrible. Ugly as sin. Did you hear that? Hear what? The cat. Oh, yeah. wonder where it is. In the kitchen, probably. Oh, it sounds hungry. You know, speaking of hungry, I haven't had any lunch. Neither have I, now that you mention it. What do you say we see if there's any food in the house? Oh. Well, but... If you think it's all right... Well, we can leave a couple of dollars. All right. Anyway, it's something to do. Eat a sandwich. Maybe there's some beer. Pass a little time. Oh, boy, what a way to spend an afternoon holed up in some creepy old house with some dull woman doesn't even know how to conduct a conversation. Yeah, what the heck? It's not her fault. What do we got in common, anyway? Well, let's see what's in this fridge. Oh, there's some milk. That's something. Any beer in there? No, I don't see any. Would you care for a glass of milk? I guess it'll have to do. There's a little jar of shrimps. No, thanks. <laughs> well, then, we'll just have milk. Great. Swell. Well, it's better than nothing. Be grateful for small favors, I always say. Oh. There we are. Uh, you want to go back in the living room? No place to sit down here. 
Lead the way. It's really infuriating. I've got so much to do at home. All that transplanting. It... Well, I just couldn't do that in the rain anyway, but I thought I could be sorting the linen instead of being stuck here with this Glenville Heights person. You find it cold in here? A little. Kind of damp, don't you think? Yes, it is damp. I have this bursitis in my left arm, and dampness always makes it worse. There's a fireplace. You think I ought to make a fire? Would they mind? Who? The people who live here. Well, I don't see why they'd mind. I'm always afraid of catching cold. Once I catch a cold, I can't get rid of it. It just hangs on and hangs on for weeks, it seems like. Now, there's a fascinating piece of information for you. She gets colds that last for weeks. What do you know? Boy, I wish I was home. The golf clubs need cleaning and polishing. Must be an ideal day for it. Instead, I'm marooned here with... No, like she's all right. Stop picking. I know you're no shining light yourself. There doesn't seem to be any kindling, does there? Well, if you roll the paper up tight enough... Those logs look kind of green. I'm pretty good at making fires. It really is damp in here, and if you've got bursitis, well, we better... Just wait till I get the fire going. It'll dry out. I don't think it's going to work. Give it a minute. It's gone out. Yeah. You want me to try? You think you can do better? I guess not. Manly pride. They're all alike. Oh, they can all make fires and hang pictures and fix cars, only when it comes right down to doing it. They can't. So we'll just sit here and freeze and catch our deaths. I wonder what time it is. I don't have a watch. I took mine to be repaired. I keep forgetting to pick it up. Can't tell the time of day by looking outside. Black as pitch out there. It most certainly is. Pitch black. Yeah. Black as pitch. Pitch black. Where do we go from here? Looks like a long, dreary afternoon, all right. And a deck of cards. Uh, but she probably doesn't play cards. Have you lived in Glenville Heights long? A little over a year. I see. I'm in real estate. Oh, really? Hmm. Things are kind of slow right now. I can imagine. Maybe they'll pick up, though. My husband's a lawyer. Don't say. Yes, he's a lawyer. Oh. There goes that cat again. I wonder where it is. As long as it stays out of here, I don't much care. But it sounds hungry. And I think I'm allergic to cats. I suppose it's waiting for its owners to come home and feed it. Yeah, they're probably stuck somewhere, same as we are. Probably. I wonder if they got a TV set around here someplace. I hope that cat isn't trapped somewhere. Did you see a TV? I'm going to go look for that cat. Or a radio? A little music might help. <laughs> There's nothing, absolutely nothing. I wonder what these people do for amusement. <gasps> What's the matter? Come here, quick. What is it? Come here. I found the cat. Every meeting is a touching. Sometimes the touch is so light that it is scarcely felt. Sometimes the touch ignites something. Something as mild as distaste, perhaps. Or something as strong as hatred. At times, the touch can kindle interest. Sometimes, attraction. Sometimes, even love. I'll return shortly with Act Two. Two people, a man and a woman, have sought refuge from a violent storm in a strange house. Two people with very little to say to each other. A strange house, rather unkempt, seemingly inhabited by a solitary cat, heard but as yet not seen by either of the intruders. As our last act ended, however, we heard... <gasps> What's the matter? Come here. Quick. What is it? Come here. I found the cat. Where? Where is it? Up there. Head of the stairs, see? Looking down at us. Yeah. Are you sure? Well, what else could it be? It looks like. 
looks like a little white cloud. It's a cat. I'm sure of it. See? There. It's hungry. I'm going to go and get it some milk. I think we left some. You want me to come with you? You stay here. <laughs> Unless you're afraid to. I'm not afraid. What's there to be afraid of? And if there isn't any milk left, I'm going to open that jar of shrimp. Stuck here with a lady who's cat crazy. Women and cats, they go together. Cat, what's with you? You're the biggest cat I ever saw. Big and white. White is a... Whiter than anything. Pure white. All white. You even got white eyes. Yeah. White eyes. Is that possible? A thing like that? White eyes? There wasn't any milk left, so I just brought this shrimp. I'll put the dish here, at the foot of the stairs. And if it's really hungry, it'll come down and get it. It doesn't strike you as kind of peculiar, a house that's only got cat food in it? <laughs> well, now that you mention it... I mean, what if we hadn't showed up here? Oh, would that cat have gone to the refrigerator and fed herself, or what? Well, I hardly think... Why doesn't it come down and get the shrimp? Scared of us, maybe? Let's move back a little. Well, we could just leave it. But somehow, for some reason, I don't want to do that. I, I know. I'll put the dish halfway up the stairs. How would that be? What do I know about feeding cats? Who would you know about anything? Crass, stupid, terrible man. The second the rain stops, I'm going to get out of this house. Oh, I hope my car starts. If it doesn't, I suppose I'll have to ask him to drive me home. Oh, well, it can't be helped. It's an emergency. And maybe that'll do it. Cat's still standing there, just looking. Just wait. Cats love shrimp. Maybe not this one. Did you notice this one has white eyes? Now, cats don't have white eyes. No cat has white eyes. This one does. Pale blue, maybe not white. He's still standing there. I wonder why she doesn't just... Well, she must smell it. Let's leave him. What makes you think she's a male cat? What makes you think he's a female cat? I think she wants the shrimp brought upstairs oh, to don't her. Don't you think you've done enough? No, I don't. Wait till my wife hears how I spent the afternoon. She won't believe it. I broke into a spooky old house to get out of the rain, and here's this simple-minded woman, and she and I spent the whole time trying to get a big white cat to eat some shrimp. That's what I did all afternoon, sweetie. Sue me, but that's what I did. Uh, would you mind coming up here for a minute? What for? Just come upstairs for a minute, will you? Oh, I don't get the point. Is there something wrong? Please, I'm Please, come up here. I've never done this much for a cat in my life. Actually, I've never had anything to do with a cat before. Now, what is it? What's up? Come with me. Where? Where where's the cat? In the bedroom. Well, you think it's okay to go in there? I know what you're thinking. It's not nice to make free with other people's houses. Well, it's kind of pushy, don't you think? Yes, I do think so, but... There's the cat. Ah, oh, she did want to eat the shrimp up here. When I came upstairs... She led me right into this room. She waited for me to open the door. So I did, and I... I went in. And she started to purr. And I put the dish down by the window, and she started eating right away, purring all the time. Well, look, I guess we've done our duty by the cat, so... Don't go. Wait a minute. I want you to... look at something... One. Look out the window. Okay. Any window? Any window. What do you see? Wow. That's beautiful. Have you ever seen such a garden? No. I never have. Such flowering trees. Those little winding paths. I wonder where they go to. It isn't raining. That's right. There's no rain. The thunder stopped. But just a few seconds ago. 
downstairs. I heard it. I know I heard it. Look out there. The grass isn't wet. The flowers are all standing up straight. The paths are dry. Well, now, look, that's not possible. I mean, there couldn't have been a terrific storm in one part of the house and, and sunlight and roses and all those beautiful things in another part. That's just not possible. I know it isn't possible. It's unbelievable. But it's true. I have this funny feeling. I think it has something to do with the cat. You mean the cat is some kind of a... I don't know, a, a magician or something? You mean some kind of a magician in disguise, maybe? Well, maybe not a magician, but a, a, a spirit, something unearthly. Don't, don't laugh. I won't laugh. Something intangible, immaterial, captured in a cat's body. Something... Saintly. Promise not to laugh. I don't feel a bit like laughing. And whatever it is, it's not real. But it is real. <laughs> the storm, the rain, the thunder, the lightning, it all stopped. As soon as we came upstairs, you can't deny that. Look at the cat. She asleep? I don't think so. Didn't I tell you she has white eyes? She doesn't have white eyes. She's blind. Blind? Beautiful. And blind. Is that why she wouldn't come downstairs? Maybe. And also, she doesn't have any claws. See, if she had claws, she'd be able to feel her way down. So I guess she stays up here all the time. Yeah. Why wouldn't she? Yeah. I would. If I could be lucky enough to live in this room, I'd never leave. What makes it so wonderful, do you think? I don't know. It's so different from the rooms downstairs. It's so clean, so restful. But so exciting. Don't you think so? Yes, restful and exciting. That's about it. What it is is... <laughs> well, it's... It's open. It's... Free. You feel as though anything could happen here. As though you could make anything happen. But everything is so nice the way it is. Why bother? Oh, what a perfect way to feel. Everybody could feel this way. They wouldn't drink or they wouldn't take dope or they wouldn't start wars. Or be mean or spiteful to anybody. It just seems so easy here. I never want to leave. Never. You know you're very attractive. Me? Attractive? Very. I'm just a middle-aged suburban housewife. You're an attractive woman. Go look at yourself in that mirror. Are you serious? Go on. Well, if you... Oh, it seems so silly, but if you really... Uh... I look... It's not what I expected at all. I mean, it's... It's me, all right, but it's not... What I'm used to. There, there's, a, there's a glow on your face. It, it looks real. I'm not going to pretend I don't see it, too. Well, don't pretend, because that's part of the magic here in this room. I think you know you look different, too. Come on, look. Look at yourself. If you say so. Oh, I wish you would. Well, I'm different. Somehow, younger. That's true. And you look... vulnerable. Me? Vulnerable? As though you could be hurt. I never thought of myself that way. Not for a long time. But now you do? I don't want to be hurt. I think it's terrible to be hurt. Only it's worse to be somebody who can't be hurt. I know just what you mean. You can get over being hurt, I guess. It might take a long time, but you could get over it. But to be... What's the word? Invulnerable? Yes. Well, that's to be dead, really. Walking around and talking, but really dead. You know what I'm talking yes, about? Yes, yes. Oh, yes, I do. Something I have to get used to. Do you know what I want to do? I don't know why. 
I want to do it, though. What? What do you want to do? I want to take my shoes off. They're, they're still wet. Yeah, mine and too. And I, I want to go and... and lie down on that big bed. Yeah, go ahead. Do it. I want to... lie down and... and dream. What about? Oh. Things. About love and... kindness and... What lies in back of the stars. And how the sun warms everything. And how it feels to stretch out and feel good. Say, the bed hasn't been made up. Did you know that? Really? That's strange in this neat, tidy room. Why wouldn't they straighten the bed? I don't know. Oh, linen sheets. Been a long time since I've seen linen sheets. Look, I don't think you ought to disturb anything. I don't know why I think that. I just I know, feel... I know what you mean. I won't touch a thing. I'll... I'll just... lie down on the bed the way it is. Hey! Can I... She doesn't want you to lie down on the bed. She's... What, protecting it or... How did she know what you were going to do? She's blind. She couldn't have seen you. It must be true. She's a... She is a spirit, a specter. She ate the shrimp like a real live cat. Then there's a spirit lodged in her. I don't know. I Don't ask me how. Why? But there's something here we don't understand. There's plenty I don't understand. Plenty. Like the way I feel about you. Oh, be careful. Be careful of what you say. No, I don't want to be careful anymore. That's what this room has done to me. Or this cat or whatever. I love you. I was afraid you'd say that. Why were you afraid? Is that such a terrible thing to say? No. But now I have to say something to you. Well, please. Say it. I love you. Well, is that so awful? But that's not what I felt about you before downstairs. I, down there, I thought you were crude and insensitive. I didn't like you at all. Down there, I thought you were silly and dull, and I hated the idea of spending an afternoon with you. What happened? What happened? What changed? What was that noise? A door. It was a door that opened and shut. It's a door downstairs. Front door, I'll bet. Lizzie? I'm home, Lizzie. It's the owner. The owner of the house. He came home. Lizzie, girl. You all right? What do we do now? I don't know. You okay, Lizzie? He'll be coming up here. I just know it. He'll be coming up here. This is what a meeting can do. Even a meeting by chance. Change attitudes, change feelings... Perhaps even lives, a whole set of circumstances which had seemed so stable, so permanent, so unalterable, can shift and become something else for no other reason than two people have met and touched. We'll be back soon with Act Three. Quite fortuitously, two people have met in a house strange to them both driven there to escape from a riotous rainstorm. Neither is to the other an ideal choice for such enforced companionship. Until they followed the plaintive mewings of a large white blind cat to the second story of the house into a beautiful bedroom from whose windows they could see an exquisite garden bathed in sunshine. Tranquility seemed to fill the room and to their intense surprise new feelings began to stir in their hearts. I have to say it. I love you. Is that such an awful thing to say? Because I love you. Downstairs, I, I thought you were silly and dull. I found you crude and insensitive. I didn't like you at all. What happened? What changed us? <gasps> A door just opened downstairs. Opened and shut. The front door, I bet. Lizzie. I'm home, Lizzie. It's the owner of the house. The owner of the cat. Lizzie, girl. You all right? What will we do now? He'll be coming up here. 
is coming up here. Well, we can't hide. There's no place. I don't want him to find us here. He'll be angry. He'll throw us out. Well, you don't want to leave. Not when we've just found... Whatever it is, we've just found. I forgot your food, my girl. I clean forgot. You must be hungry. I'll fetch it for you. He's going into the kitchen. What did you mean when you said what we found out, whatever it is? I don't know. It's just this feeling, this strange new feeling. You said you loved me. I know I did, and you said you loved me. Did you mean it? Did you? I think I did. Didn't you? I think so. But maybe... Maybe what? what? Maybe I just felt what love was like. Does that make any sense to you? No shrimp this time, but I've got sardines for you. I'm late, Lizzie, because of the storm. It's a terrible storm. What will he do to us? Will he call the police? So, my little sweetheart. Come. Well, good afternoon, madam. Sir? Oh, I hope you'll forgive us. We can explain how this happened. Well, I imagine it was the storm. Yes, it was, Whitney, the storm. My car went over a huge puddle down the roadways, and it simply stopped. There was thunder and lightning, well, and... there certainly was. I stopped my car just outside your house because I, I, I couldn't see a thing. The windshield wipers might as well not have been working at all for all the good they did. You uh, weren't in the same car, both of you? Well, no. I, actually, we just met here. A little while ago. I was here first. Your front door was open. I'm afraid I just walked in. How did you happen to get up here? It was the cat. Lizzie? Was that her name? That's what I call her. Well, she kept mewing, and, and, and we didn't know where she was. She sounded hungry. Well, I was late getting here. I'm afraid we drank most of the milk in the refrigerator. So then we put that shrimp in a dish, and we left it at the foot of the stairs. But she wouldn't come down. And then we put it halfway up the stairs, and that didn't work either. Lizzie's blind. Yes, we we found that out later, after I took the shrimp upstairs. She sort of led me to the bedroom. And this is where she lives. Nobody could blame her for that. I'd like to live here myself. Oh? I mean, downstairs, there was this terrible storm, you know, wind and rain. Terrible thunder and lightning. But up here... Everything's different up here. If you look out the window... I've looked out the window. Well, then you know. It's all sunlight and flowers and peaceful. And, it's just and sort of benign, if you know what I mean. It's gentle-like. I do know. And the mirrors? If you look in the mirrors in this room, you look uh, different somehow. Younger. Prettier. <laughs> not so worried and not so harassed. You know what I mean? Sure, I know. But why should that be? Well, it's kind of a long story. Well, we'd love to hear it if you don't mind telling it. I'm not sure you'll believe it. I'm not sure I believe it. Except that it's so. Oh, please, tell us. Well, this house used to belong to a couple. They bought it when they got married, almost a hundred years ago. They were very happy here. They loved the house, and they loved each other. That's a good beginning for happiness, wouldn't you say? But then they became even happier when a daughter was born to them. Elizabeth, they named her. Beautiful girl. Sweet girl. But she was blind. Blind? Born blind. Blind from birth. Oh, how terribly sad. Oh, it's not as sad as you might think. There was so much love. The love of her parents for each other and their love for her. No, no, it wasn't sad. Unfortunate, maybe, but not really sad. Love can drive out sadness, provided there's enough of it. I'm starting to think that that's true. What happened to all of them? Well, Elizabeth died. Oh, no. Oh. And her parents' hearts were broken. Of course. How old was she when she died? Getting on for 30. Her father and mother went in the morning, not just for the year that's customary, but for year after year after year. I knew them well, and I saw them every day, and I worried about them. They were getting older. They were getting feebler. They were getting sadder. They were losing themselves in their grief. And I couldn't stand to see it. So one day, I... I brought them a cat. Lizzie! I rescued her from a laboratory where they had put out her eyes. Oh, why? Why did what? they do that? Oh, no, some experiment they were conducting to prove something or other. Oh. And after they blinded her, they were going to kill her. But I said, don't do that. Give it to me. 
And they did. And you brought her here, to, to this house, for the old people. It took to her right away. Partly because she was blind, I guess, like their daughter. And so at least they had something to love. They had something to share their love with. How long ago was this? How long ago did they take the cat to live with them? 24 years ago. She's that old? The cat is that old? Probably older. I didn't know cats ever lived that long. Well, it's my idea she'll live to be 30. You mean as long as Elizabeth lived? That's what I mean. You don't mean... I mean, you, you, you can't mean that the girl's spirit has come back in a cat's body. Why not? Well, because... Because why? Well, such things aren't possible. Why not? Well, they're not... They're not real. The old people believe they were real. I believe they're real. So they're real. Maybe not for other people, but... Other people don't know everything that went on in this house. And I do. But how does it happen that you know so much about it? Well, I was in love with Elizabeth. I was going to marry her. So I know. Of course. Would you tell us one more thing? Whatever you want to know. Why does the cat live upstairs? Because the old people moved upstairs after I brought them the cat. They lived in this room. I ran their errands. I brought them their food, whatever they needed. And after they died, the cat went on living here. I went on dropping in twice a day to feed her, make sure she's all right. It's the least I can do, don't you think? There's one more thing I'd like to know, if you, if you don't mind our being so curious. I don't mind. The bed. It's not made up. I mean, the rest of the room is so beautiful and so neat and tidy. Why isn't the bed made up? The old people died in that bed. They died there with their arms around each other. And both of them were smiling. And the cat was watching them from the foot of the bed. When I wanted to lie down just to take a little rest, the cat wouldn't let me. She wants to keep it the way it was for the time when the old people come back. Can't blame her, can you? You mean she's really Elizabeth? Uh, Elizabeth reincarnated? I'm not saying she is. I'm saying she could be. Is that why you call her Lizzie? Her name is really Elizabeth? Her name isn't Elizabeth. Oh, I, I... The old people called her Elysium. That's a strange name. Why'd they call her that? Well, Elysium is the dwelling place of happy souls after death. That's what they tried to make out of this room. A happy place for their dead child to live. And while they did that, they made a happy place for themselves. It couldn't help but be that way. I don't suppose it's possible for anybody to buy this place. No, 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 no. No, it, it belongs to the cat. You mean it? It's in the will. Well, after the cat dies? It comes to me, but she isn't going to die for a long time. Tell me one more thing, will you, if it isn't too painful? How did Elizabeth die? What didn't I tell you? She broke her neck. <gasps> she fell downstairs and broke her neck. Oh. That's why the cat has no claws, isn't it? Yes. Well, I think the worst of the storm must be over by now. Let's go downstairs, shall we? I'll drive you home. I don't think your car's dried out yet. All right. Take a couple of hours of sunshine before it'll start. Remember all that sunshine back in that upstairs room? You can't take it with you. No, you can't. You haven't told me where you live. Oh, it's straight along this road. It's not far. I'll tell you when. We've never introduced ourselves. Do you realize that? I don't think we should. You may be right. We said some pretty impetuous things to each other up there in that room. I know we did. Things about love and all that. It seems so natural up there to say those things. But it isn't here. I wonder why. We're the same people. Are we? Of course we are. Then why don't we feel the same? 
I wouldn't know. I think that in that upstairs room, we were different because we were using a different part of ourselves. The upper part, you might say. The better part? Yes. The part that reaches out and touches and doesn't hold back and protect itself all the time. What happens to that part? It gets smothered somehow. Strangled. It gets killed. Why don't you let me off at the corner? I can take you to your No, I really rather you wouldn't. Better to leave things the way they are. I think so. Thank you. Thank you for... everything. For what? I don't know. I should thank you. For what? I don't know. Anyway, I'll never forget you. I... I don't think I will. I'll never forget you. At least I hope I won't. Is there a room someplace where the heart expands and accepts and is generous? Where we cease to be petty and irritable and sullen? Where we stop being against and start being for? Where we can relax and enjoy and stop resenting and envying? Every heart longs for such a room. And for fleeting moments, each heart finds it. Does it really exist? I don't know. Do you? I'll be back shortly. Suppose such a room does exist. How do we find and keep it? Does it have an address? Does anyone live there all the time? Even a cat? A cat who is really a ghost waiting for other ghosts? Or is the room within the human heart? Is it a room that has been closed off, locked, shuttered? Is it possible we can open the room, unlock its door, and fling wide its shutters? If it is possible, then only love can do it. Of that much, I'm sure. Our cast included Marion Seldes, Mandel Kramer, and Bobby Reddick. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule, and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.